one cup, 300 cups. My name is Todd Sutton, and I'm known as the Wasteler. Today I'm going to investigate how something as common as a foam cup can be turned into something like this beautiful picture frame. Let's go find out how. Hey Robert. Good morning. Hey, Todd Sutton, nice to meet you. Thanks for taking time out of your day to give me a tour here of the facility. So here at the MER for Mature Recovery Facility, this is the tipping floor. Correct. Where all the trucks come in from curbside and dump their loads. Yes. So I'm seeing food grade, I'm seeing expanded styrene. Did you need to add more trucks or staff to take on this new material stream? We did not. Did it devalue the commodity streams that you're already handling? It did not. Only your expanded styrene breaks but it doesn't affect the value of the material. It's manageable and your food service products do not break up. It may lose its form a little bit, but it does not break up. So where does it go from here? From here, it goes to the in-feed system up to the sort line. And can we go see that? We can. All right, let's go. All right. So Robert, this is really amazing. It's overwhelming. What's happening right here? What am I seeing? Right here, they're picking out all the different commodities that they need to pick off the line prior to going to the in-feed where you see those, those discs going around. Does this take a lot of extra labor on the sort line? It does not. All we did was add another commodity to the pre-sort. You're utilizing the same personnel that you had in the past to just pick off another commodity. The foam is actually retrieved from the sort line above. It's then placed onto the hopper. It comes down onto the in-feed system here that is then fed to an oversized grinder that we purchased, along with an oversized blower, so that we could cut down on the labor cost. The grinder itself actually has blades inside the hopper there that grind up the styrofoam, and then it takes it through this tube to the blower and blows it through this tube that you see above. I noticed that the line and the grinder is situated under the sort line. Is that normal? It is not. We actually had this as a dead space. We were not utilizing it. So we felt this was the best place to place this where it would be out of the way. So are you running this grinder all the time? It only operates maybe an hour a day. And then the actual densifier and hopper operate automatically in conjunction with the actual grinder and blower. So this is your blower pipe, which of course comes from the blower, blows the ground material into the hopper. The reason we put in this piping and this blower was so that we would not have to transport the material by hand back over to the hopper so it automatically fills by itself. I'm used to seeing super sacks. Is this a normal size hopper? This is an oversized hopper so that we would not have to have the machine operate so often. I noticed the conduit for electrical feeding the densifier here, but what is this line or wire coming out of the top of the hopper That's there? That's a good question, Todd. That's actually your sensor that's attached to the hopper. Once it's filled up with the ground foam, then it automatically will start up the densifier and start densifying the material. So that's the trigger to tell the densifier to go. Correct. So this is the densified foam. Yes. It's pretty impressive. It's pretty heavy for, you know, when I think about how light foam is. How important is it to densify the foam here? It's very important to densify the foam. And the reasoning is because you want to get at least 40,000 pounds in a truckload. So if it's not densified, it would be very light. If this foam wasn't densified, what would a truckload weigh? A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. So that's pretty significant. It's about, what, 40 to 1? 40 to 1. That's impressive. Is this densified under heat and pressure, or how is this made? It's only using hydraulics, so it's only pressure. So where does it go from here? Would you like to go to the staging area? Sure. Take a look? All right. Okay. This is the staging area for the foam. So I see many of these pallets, and you mentioned, is that right, 40 of these are going to go on on a truckload? Yes. So once a truckload is full, where does this material go? We can sell it domestic or export. And how long have you been marketing this material? For it's since 2009. Is there a strong demand for this material right now? There is. Robert, I really appreciate your time. The tour was very informative. So now we've seen how styrofoam, polystyrene, or foam has been hand sorted and densified. Now let's go see how this material is auto sorted. We're here at Titus Murf Services in Los Angeles. This facility takes the residue or seconds from MRFs like the facility we just visited. 
Tony, what's going on here? Okay, Todd, we're sorting mainly with optical sorters. Tell me about that optical sorter. What's it do? It's got a sensors that we call optical or optics, and it sees the material, the actual material. Kind of I mean, like your, your eye. Yeah, like your yeah. eye. What it does is tells the machine, okay, this is the material, you shoot it with air. So it's got many injectors. We can shoot as many materials we want up or down. So you can program the computer, the computer's eyes, to air jet specific materials. Yes. So what materials are you jetting or, or optically sorting here on this facility? Right now where we're sorting, it's PS and EPS, ex extended polystyrene and polystyrene up, and HDPE, PET, and aluminum down. Why, why up? What's the difference? Why are you choosing to go up and up or down with your optical sorter? Just for this particular machine, it does better sorting when it's shooting up, and also you want uh, the heaviest materials going down. So I see over here a hopper full of EPS and rigid styrene, uh, like solo cups, for example, drinking cups. Why are you blending that? The last facility I was at, this was going for the EPS. How's the value of that compared to just, let's say, a a, a single PS sort, or, or an EPS sort, rather? Well, it is lower than separately. Okay. But the idea of this uh, project is doing a diversion. The value is lower, but you capture more. Is that yes. what I'm hearing? Does that devalue the other commodities, specifically paper? Not at all. Not at all? No. Are you happy with it? Does it seem oh, successful it here? It is. It is. All We're right. doing something good. So we're now going to go to a facility that washes, grinds, and prepares the material for recycling into new products. I'm here at Dart Container Corporation, the next stop on my investigation of how foam polystyrene is recycled. I'm here with Bob Wilman of Dart, and he's kind enough to give me a tour of what happens at this facility. So Bob, can you tell me about the type of material that this facility handles? Yeah, so we take your food service foam, such as your plates, your saucers, your cups. We also take food trays, some small amount of block. They're brought over to the sorting table. We want to sort out the contaminants. It goes into the washer. The three-stage washer, we pre-wash, wash, and rinse. And we bring it through the dryer. It's a four-stage dryer. We dry the material, and we auger it into a machine that we extrude into a brick. So you, you're going to have a new facility that will, will take all kinds of expanded styrene. Can you tell me about what, what kind of materials would the new facility handle? Well, it's going to take just about almost anything. It's going to take all your food product material. It's going to take your block. It's going to take your polystyrene, the hard rigid material, another type of polystyrene material. So Bob, I guess you could say we're at the end of the line here. What's going on? Uh, yes, Todd, the clean material comes into the thermal densifier. It comes out as an ingot, but we call it taffy. Taffy? Yes, taffy. Uh, I, I think I'll call it backwater taffy. Okay. So from there, we take it over to the squasher, and we weigh it. All right. You weigh it. And what do these things weigh? They weigh about 40 pounds, about 8,000 cups. So now I'm going to take this ingot, recycled polystyrene, and see it turned into a new product. Hi, Todd. I'm Jonathan Lee. Hey, Jonathan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm hoping you can help me learn how this can be recycled into something new. Absolutely. Come with me. Todd, the first part of the process, as you can see, we'll take blocks such as the one that you brought in, along with blocks such as this, which we get from Murphs and other suppliers, and they get broken down into smaller fragments like this. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. So these get broken down further. This is our pellet machine, and it gets stretched out in, into spaghetti-like strands. And from there, it gets cut down further into pellets. What do you do with the pellets? We extrude them into moldings, uh, picture frame moldings. OK, so the pellets are used as feedstock to produce your frames. Correct. So let's go check that out. That sounds good. So these are the pellets we just saw being made at the pelletizer. So this material is what your frames are made out of. That's correct. Can we go see that? Sure. All let's right, take let's a look. go. So Jonathan, obviously, we're in the middle of your, your frame production line few questions. Right. First, how many lines are you running right now? We currently have eight lines running. And is that all the lines that you have? We have two more, but they're not set up yet, and we've been unable to set up because the unfortunate part of the business is that we haven't been able to get enough raw materials to get the other two lines running. So if you had more material, more recycled feedstock coming at you, you could run all those lines? That would be the case. That's what we're hoping for. We do receive this material container loads tons at a time and we haven't had enough to set up the extra two lines so we're definitely in need of more we, we've been importing stuff from mexico 
And it's our hope to get more materials from the U.S. so we can get it more domestically. And I see this continuous line running all the time. How many feet per day are you running out of this plant? We're averaging about 55,000 feet per day. 55,000. So that's about 10 miles a day. Right. And you're not even running at full capacity. That's correct. Very impressive. So what have we learned today on our investigation? We've learned that this material can be included in curbside recycling programs. It can be collected, sorted, and recycled into new materials. We've also learned that there's a big demand for this material as feedstock for materials just like this. I say this is another successful investigation by Todd Sutton, The Waste Loop.